All right, guys, this video was made possible in part by Greg Spindell, a good friend of mine in Tennessee. I'd like to give a very special thanks to him. Uh, let's go ahead and start the video. talk about the uh, the old Smith style, the chronometric speedometers for the Royal Enfields. Uh, they, they're made by multiple, multiple companies, uh, most of which are in India. You have to be very, very careful which one you order. I ordered one from eBay uh, just on a whim because I heard people talking about them and I wanted to get a look at them and see what they were all about. Well, it was, still had the Smaller threads and the connection for the speedometer cable, the Smiths, the originals had uh, small pitch and small diameter uh, speedometer cables that went with them. And unfortunately, it did not work. Uh, I passed that on to a friend of mine uh, to use on his old Norton. So I have got one from Hitchcock's. And these are supposed to work. They have the right size pitch. Uh, the right size thread there, right size connections, and I went ahead and chose the brass ringed one because I thought it would look really good on the battle green kind of pop there, and I chose the one that shows 80, it should go up to 90, but we're dealing with a C5 here. It can get up to 90, but you're not going to want to hold there for long periods, so this one should be fine. I also went ahead and got some high tension lead. Alright, this is the red and black. I thought it would look really good on the bike. I feel these should look really good with it. Uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and change your high tension lead at least once a year and go ahead and clean the connections from the coil and the spark plug boot. Alright, let's go ahead and see how these things go on. Let's go ahead and start with our high tension lead. You have your spark plug boot here and this black cable that is connecting it, that lead, that is the high tension lead and there's a screw on each end. This boot screws into the end of that wire and meshes in with the copper wires inside. It routes through and comes back around over to here. Okay, And then it goes right up into the coil. The coil is sitting right here. You just unscrew it here, unscrew it here, and it just comes right out. All right. All right, once you have your high tension lead down. off, if you take a look at your spark plug boot here, you can see the inside it is basically a screw. It screws into the end of the high tension lead here, which has copper wires on the inside, and those teeth, or the uh, screw area meshes in with those teeth, and that's where the electrical connection comes from. And over time, the wire itself, those copper wires, and the uh, screw-in portion of the boot can develop some corrosion and it's good to replace these. They also break down as an ele electrical current is passed through them. Uh, the copper areas, the copper wires can break down and this area, this end is, this end is what is screwed into the coil itself. All right, the next thing to do is to trim your lead to size. I went ahead and left a couple inches uh, longer uh, for leeway in case I need it. The next step is to go ahead and install our insulation and weatherproofing boot. That's what tries to keep moisture out of the connection between the spark plug boot and the wires. Alright, next step is to put on a spark plug boot. Once the boot is in place and our weatherproofing co cover is on, uh, the next step would be to go ahead and put it into the coil itself with this end. Now whenever you're doing this, it's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, like I said. You just push it up through the little weatherproofing that's permanent on the coil. Push it up until you feel resistance. Make sure that your copper wires are flush. Okay, so you get a good seating. And you just push upward pressure and turn to the right. And then you'll feel it start to bite and grab and just turn until it gets tight. Let's do that now. Once it's in place, okay, give it a tug 
light tug here and a light tug on the other side of course make sure it's not going to come out and you don't want it to be flopping down like this and sitting on the valve cover that's going to cause vibrations and it could wear through your cloth or it could get hot and melt it could go down a little further it could do anything in the world so your best friend is going to be a zip tie now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire or the high tension lead and zip tie it to my harness up here there's a Y and I'm going to zip tie it to there so that I still have a little bit of piece uh, sticking out a little bit here in the front to kind of showcase that color it kind of makes it pop uh, it just it's just going to look a lot okay. better once you have it secured and out of the way where it's not going to touch anything no damage is going to come to it and it's supported that part is finished you can go ahead and start it up Let's move on to the Smith style. Right, first thing I'm going to want to do is remove the entire headlight assembly in one piece. And in order to do that, you have three screws. You have two on the bottom, one here, and of course one over here on the other side. And you have one on the top. Now the one on the top is a tensioner. It is what holds everything together, so you do not have to remove this one completely. Uh, it has a little mechanism on it kind of shaped like that and when you tighten it up it pulls up to the top of this little casket and holds everything together all right so about four five six turns on this you don't have to remove it all the way all right, let's go ahead and do that now the top screw loosened and the side screws out and you've worked it a little bit back and forth all right it should just pop right off of there like so and you just disconnect your headlight Right there, from there. All right, now we're ready to move on. All right, our next step is to unscrew the speedometer itself and pull it out. All right, our next step is to go ahead and remove this retaining nut that is holding on the bracket for the speedometer to hold it into the casket. Uh, some speedometers may have two studs coming down through here, one on each side with a nut on those to retain them as well. Uh, the important thing is just to remove the retainers and remove that bracket so that the speedometer can pull out. Once we have our retaining nut and washer removed as well as the bracket, it's time to go ahead and unplug the wiring harness here. Okay, just right down behind here. That's the connection. All right, we're going to remove that. Okay. All right, once that is removed, the speedometer can be pushed up. Okay, and let's out. go ahead and get a comparative view of the two speedometers. This is the Royal Enfield speedometer that came out. All right, it's got a beveled gasket there, and it has a little slotted piece that goes into a recess in the area to align the speedometer. Okay. The one from Hitchcock's, it does not have that beveled gasket, so I'll probably reuse that beveled gasket from the stock uh, speedometer. And another big difference, as I was saying before, you can see the two studs on the end that hold this down. This has thumb nuts that are tightened down by hand. Okay. All right. Another big difference is the wiring. All right. The Smith's reproduction only has one light, and that is to illuminate it when the lights are on at night. It does not have uh, your warning lights for your turn signal, uh, your neutral, which is here or your high beam, your neutral, and your turn signals. Uh, but that's not really important to me, really. Finding neutral isn't really all that hard. Uh, and turn signals, you can remember to turn them off. And your high beams, you can tell if they're on or off just by looking at them out in front of the motorcycle. So, 
we're going to go ahead and hook this up without all of those and in order to do that they did supply this one with or Hitchcock's did supply this one with bullet connectors I'm not going to be using bullet connectors uh, I'm going to go ahead and use these uh, retainers here let's go ahead and slap slap those on and tighten them down and it's a permanent fit as opposed to shaking and you can break these connectors uh, or they could come loose I'm just going to go that route and as far as the wiring goes I do have an extra wiring harness that I've went ahead and mocked up for this these are your three warning lights I removed the bulbs and bundled them together uh, with a zip tie and some electrical tape okay there's heat shrink under the electrical tape as well and I've go ahead and stripped these two wires here these are for the illumination bulb and the very top of the speedometer uh, your your two wires that come off of that you just cut those strip them back a little bit and I'm going to cut the bullet connectors off of the provided harness from Hitchcock's and I'm just going to go ahead and fasten them together permanently once we've made right, our do connection that. that's light blue to gray and purple to black and inside here I've went ahead and secured my bundle of unused uh, bulb sockets there and we're ready to go ahead and remove our mounting bracket here via these thumb screws okay and we're going to install the smith style speedometer before we complete the install I wanted to go ahead and show you the recessed area in the casket here where the the stock speedometer goes right here that little that little notch that's why I'm going to go ahead and re and uh, reuse the little gasket that is on here. We have our harness pushed in or our pigtail. I will go ahead and align the speedometer and make sure that it is level. As you can see, the gasket for the original is on here as well as the gasket that came with it. It lifts it up a little bit and it just gives it extra protection. Okay, our next step is to go ahead and install our bracket. And our thumb screws. Right, once it is secured, we can go ahead and pull our little protective cap off of the end and screw in Next our speedometer. Let's go ahead and plug in our harness right under here, remember? And there we are. Now we just go ahead and plug in our headlight assembly. Okay, and reinstall, tighten it down, and we're done. Before anyone asks in the comment section how bright it is at night, let's go ahead and find out. Well, it's a little bit brighter than it looks on camera. Uh, so it may be all right. It's not quite as bright as the stock speedometer, but I mean, it's plenty usable. You should be able to use it just As you can fine. see, the Smith style speedometer, it really does pop with that brass on the battle green. Uh, some of you may be wondering what this line is for. Uh, that was the posted speed limit to my understanding uh, back in the early days whenever motorcycles were equipped with these. This is a reproduction. It is not a chronometric. It is a magnetic. So you don't get that jerky motion that some people are looking for. It doesn't update itself. Um, uh, it's just for the looks. And I like it for that purpose. I'm perfectly fine with that. I took it down the road just for a little bit and compared it to GPS. And it does hold its speed very well. It's about three mile per hour off. But just look at that brass. I and mean, that's why I chose this one. And as you can see, I doubled up on the little weatherproofing there just to raise it up a little bit and to kind of highlight it. And it really does give a unique look to it. I really like it.
And as far as the high tension lead goes, after I changed it, uh, there was a little bit of corrosion. Of course, you need to clean those screw areas off. And I did see some improved spark. It felt a little more peppy. Felt like it had a little more power to it. So, all in all, a good day. All right, guys, it is stupid hot here in North Carolina today. Uh, we are in the middle of August after all. Uh, I do want to say that both the Smith Styles Predometer, they have different styles of these available at Hitchcock's. I'll leave a link to the speedometers in the description below. And the high tension lead were a plus. Highly recommend it. The Smiths, you're not going to get a better style than that. It has the original look. Of course, you've got the speed, the speedometer needle going to the bottom as opposed to the top. That's really neat. Uh, absolutely suggested. All right, guys, I'd like to uh, give a special thanks once again to Greg Spindell. And guys, I look forward to seeing you at the Royal Ramble in Galax, Virginia on August 24th, 8 a.m., at the School of the Arts Woodworking Center there in Galax. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, hit that like button, and while you're down there, you might as well subscribe. All right, see you in the next video, guys.